I'm going to be working through these problems on page 499. Hopefully you've had a chance to do some of those. We can see how successful you've been. If for some reason you have not been successful, uh, pause the video uh, and see me, and we can uh, work it out to see what you did wrong and to help you to be successful. Uh, I want to guide you to, to understand what is going on here. So let's look at uh, number one. It is... Uh, x plus 4x plus 6x. Now I see that we have like terms. All of those are like terms, and because they're all like terms and we're adding them, I'll just add them all together. x, which is 1x, so 1x plus 4x plus 6x is going to give me 11x. And that's all you have to do to simplify that expression. And this is an x, not a y. Got to be careful. Okay, number 2. Um, I have 3x plus 4x plus 5x. Those are my three terms. It's addition, so I'm just going to put them all together again. They're all like terms. 3 plus 4 is 7x plus 5x equals 12x. Okay, 12x. Not bad. This next one, number 3, is a multiplication, and if I would... Uh, write it out, it would be 9 times 5 times x. And because of associative property, I can uh, do that first. And that's 45 times x, which is the same as 45x. Okay. Let's go on down to number 4. We have 3x plus 8y plus 13x. Now I'm seeing I have... Uh, that's an x variable, that's an x variable. This is a y variable. So in terms of like terms, uh, I see these two are like, and then the 8y is not. So I'm going to put the two like terms together. And that's 16x plus 8y. And since they're not like terms, I can't put it together any farther. That is in simplest form. Number 5. It's, uh, oh, a distributive property. Okay, so I'm going to distribute the 7 to the 3 and then the 7 to the 5. Okay, so 7 times 3 is 21x plus 7 times 5 is 35y. Now we look at the terms, um, and this is an x term and this is a y term. So they are not like terms. They cannot be put together. Number six, I have 3x plus 6x plus 2x, and that's an x, x, x. It's all addition. Put them all together, I get 11x. Number seven, this is talking about factor, factoring. So what I do to factor them is I look at the two numbers. I have 24, 18. I always go to the smallest number, 18. Um, let's do 18 here, and then I factor it out. So 18 is 1 and 18, uh, 2 and 9, 3 and 6, and that's all. Now I'm going to start with the biggest number. Does 18 go into 24? Nope. Does 9 go into 24? Nope. Does 6 go into? Yes. Then I have my greatest common factor. So I put 6 over here. How many times does 6 go into 24? 4 times, so that's 4x, plus, how many times does 6 go into 18? 3, and that's a y, 3y. And that's all I can do. Alright, let's go over to number 8, another factoring. And so I take the smallest number, 16, and I factor it out. 1, 16, 2, 8, 3, no, 4, and 4 and 4, so that's, uh, those are my factors. Does 16 go into 40? Nope. Does 8 go into 40? Sure does. So I put my 8 here. 8 goes into 16 two times. And 8 goes into 40 five times. So to factor this out, it's going to be 8, parentheses, 2x plus 5y. All right, now we're going to get to some good stuff with the word problems, and we'll start with number 9. 
kind of fun talking about a hockey game. And let's see here. I like to read it. Read it kind of slow and think about it. Sometimes I underline some things. So I have eight friends here. They're going to a hockey game. The price of admission is X dollars. Um, four of the friends paid an extra six dollars for a player guidebook. So if four of them wanted that, must mean that four of them didn't. Okay. So I want to get um, what four friends, four friends just wanted to get into the hockey game, which would be X, and then they bought a book. So that's one admission and one guidebook. Four of the friends wanted that. So I'm going to times that by four. And But there's four other people, four other friends who game. So I want to add that to get the total cost. Add four friends who just paid for the admission, which was X. So there we go. I have my four friends here. And I have my four friends here. So that's a total of eight friends. Now I'm going to distribute it out and simplify. So 4X plus... I went here, now I go here, 24 plus 4x. Look for terms. I have a term here, I have a term here, and I have a term here. But what I notice is this is an x, this is an x, this one's not. So my 4x plus 4x, those are like terms, which give me 8x, and then I have to add the 24 we cannot add those um, together because it doesn't work. This is multiplication, 8 times x, and then this would be addition. So there's no property that says you can just put all this together. So you have 8x plus 24. All right. This is kind of a tricky one, number 10. You have uh, Gabriella is x years old. So I'm going to start with Gabriella. She's X. Her sister Felicia is six years older than she is. So if I want Felicia's age, I add six. Their mother is twice as old as Felicia. So this right here is Felicia's age, X plus six. Her mom, if I times that by two, I have the mother's age. And their aunt Tanya is X years older than their mother. So this right here is the mother's age. But Tanya is six years older. No, not six, I'm sorry. Is X years older than their mother. So it's this right here plus X. And that will get me Tanya's age. So I have my expression, but I'm going to simplify it. Because I think I have some like terms that I can put together. First, I'm going to distribute it. 2x, because I go from here to here, now I go here to here, plus 12, plus x. And I see that I have this x term here and an x term here. This one is not. I'm going to put my two x terms together. It's going to get me 3x plus 12. And this is, it represents Tanya's age. Number 11, box set includes three thriller movies, not my cup of tea, and two comedies. I'd like those. So, I have a box set equals three thriller and two comedies. Okay, that's one box set. Now, T, the... Uh, T is the cost of a thriller, and C is the cost of a comedy. So one box set would be 3T plus 2C. That's one box set. Let's read on. Write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost of six box sets. So if this right here is one, I'm going to times it by six because I want six of those. Now I'm going to distribute that out. 
6 times 3t is 18t, and 6 times 2c is, I'm going to add, that's my t, 18t plus 12c. And there is the cost of 6 box sets. Number 12, a nice fall candle set. So we have a set that has four vanilla candles and six pumpkin spice candles. All right, four vanilla and six pumpkin. Okay, now we're going to use V to represent the cost of a vanilla candle, and we're going to use P to represent the cost of a pumpkin spice candle. So, one set would be four vanillas times V, which is the cost of those candles, plus six times P, the cost of the pumpkin. So that is one candle set. That's how much it would cost to get one. Uh, write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost of four sets. So I want four sets. So I do that. Now I'm going to distribute this out. 4 times 4v is 16v, and 4 times 6p is 24p. And there is the total cost of 4 sets of the candles. Okay. Let's go on to the next page, page 500, where we have uh, 13, 14, and 15. All right, so let's look at number 13. Um, make this a little bigger. we got to read what it says carefully. It says, find the value of y. So I'm looking for the value of y that makes each equation true for all the values of x. So what I notice is we have an equal sign here. And I need to find out what this y is. So on this side... We have two like terms, so I'm going to put those terms together. It gives me 9x equals yx. So if I have an x here and an x here, what does y have to be so that these are equal? Well, y has to be 9. So then it would be 9x equals 9x. Exactly. Okay, let's come over here, do the same thing with this one, um, and here's our equal sign, so I'm going to figure out this side. I see that I have this like term and this like term, so I'm going to put those together. I have 11x and a 1x, so that's 12x plus 5 equals 12x plus y. I want to find the value of y, and as I look at this, I see that this 12x equals this 12x, plus, plus, now I have a 5 here and a y here. Those have to be the same for this to be true. So five, y must equal 5. Okay. Cool. Number 15. All right, little pizza one. This is kind of a cool one. I like I like this problem. So let's see what we got here. Pizza Palace charges X dollars for a large cheese pizza. So that's right here. That's if you just get a large cheese. And then it has additional fee based on the number of toppings. So if you want one topping, you're going to pay this. Two topping, you're going to pay this. Three here and four here. So now we have three different orders. Let's go with order number, or order A. Order A. Two large cheese pizzas. So that's going to be 2x, because that's two of the larges is going to be the cost, 2x. And we have three large, so we're going to add that, plus three large pepperoni pizzas. So we have three of them. So it's going to be 3 times the cost 
of the pizza, cheese pizza, plus, let's see, what would uh, pepperoni, this would be one topping, so it's 0. 0.75, okay? So the total cost of two large cheese pizzas and three pizzas with one topping. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this one down over here. I'm kind of running out of space. So I have to simplify it. 2x plus, I distribute this 3 to x plus 3x plus, now I want to do 3 times 0.75. And I know that, and you could do it on a calculator, you could do it on paper. I know it is $2.25. So we have $2.25. This is a like term. This is a like term. This is not. I put my two like terms together. 5x plus 2.25. So this right here is going to give me the cost of two large cheese pizzas and three large pepperoni pizzas. Let's go to B. I'll do this one in blue. Write and simplify an expression that represents the total cost of eight large pizzas. Wow, we want eight large pizzas. Okay, so two are cheese, and six have four toppings. That's huge. So two are cheese, so it's going to be 2x. That's just the cheese, but i got to add six more. 6, and each of those 6 is going to cost X amount of dollars plus 4 toppings, which is this 375. 3.75. That's a lot. Now, what we want to do is we want to uh, come down here and we want to simplify it. So the 2X plus distribute the 6 out which is going to be 6x plus 6 times 3.75. And you can use your calculator on this. It is 2250. Now I look at my like terms. I see I have this one and this one. So that's 8x plus 2250. And that's the cost of all of those pizzas in simplest form. Okay, one more. We'll go back to red on this one. So we have Elsa orders three large cheese pizzas. 3x, that's three large, and that's with no toppings, it's just three times x. And then we have a large pepperoni and mushroom pizza, and a large green pepper and onion pizza. So as I'm looking at this, I have two more large pizzas. And this first one has pepperoni and mushroom, which is two toppings. And this other one is green pepper and onion, which is two toppings. So I have two more larges that are each X. Got to times it by the large. Plus they each have two toppings, which is $1.50. Okay. And I add these to the 3X. So now I simplify this. 3X plus 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 150 plus $3. So I look at this. I see I have a couple like terms that I can add together. 3x plus 2x is 5x plus 3. And that is my cost of all of these pizzas. Okay, so this right here is A, this right here is B, and this right here is C. Okay, hopefully you understood uh, this and are successful and you can keep moving on. Um, if for some reason you don't, stop it, come see me. I want to help you so that you can be successful in figuring these uh, problems out.